To sketch the derivative of a function, we first need to understand what a derivative is. A derivative is an expression which tells you the slope of the tangent line to a curve at any given point. If you're studying calculus, you probably know this already, or have heard it in some form. This definition will be relied on heavily throughout this demonstration. Given the graph of a function, f of x, we can sketch its derivative using this definition of the derivative and our understanding of tangent lines. Remember, a tangent line is just a line that touches the curve at one point. The slope of this tangent line will be key to developing our graph of this function's derivative. We'll start by sliding our tangent line along our curve. Notice that the slope of this tangent line is becoming less steep until the point where the slope of the tangent line is equal to zero. At this point, the function f of x has a minimum value. Since we're trying to develop a graph of the derivative, or the slope of the tangent line, and the slope at this point is zero, I need to place a point at zero on the x-axis of the graph of the derivative. This says at this point on the graph of the original function, the derivative is equal to zero. Let's continue sliding our tangent line along our curve. As we move along, the slope of our tangent line becomes positive, but slowly decreases as it yet again reaches a slope of zero at this local maximum. I can line up this point with the graph of the derivative and place a point on the x-axis here as the slope of the tangent line to the original function is zero at this point. Moving the tangent line along the curve of this function, we can see one more place where this happens, the last point where the slope of the tangent line is equal to zero. To summarize so far, to sketch the graph of the derivative of a function, place a point on the x-axis in line with any point where the slope of the tangent line is zero for the original function. So at this point, we know where our derivative is equal to zero, and we've shown that on the graph of our derivative, but we now have to fill in the gaps and connect our points with some sort of curve. This can be done in two ways. The first is using our understanding of functions, specifically polynomials, as this is a quartic function, a polynomial of degree four, which starts in quadrant two and ends in quadrant one. We don't know much about this function as this is just a general example, but we do know the leading coefficient must be positive as this function opens in the upward direction. So how does all this help us graph the derivative? Well, we know that applying the power rule to find the derivative of this function would result in a cubic function as we reduce the degree by one when we apply this rule. Since our leading coefficient was positive, our cubic must also have a positive leading coefficient, which suggests this function begins in quadrant three and ends in quadrant one. Connecting these points with a nice smooth curve results in a nice sketch for the derivative of our original function. While this is a completely acceptable method for sketching derivatives, we're on the topic of calculus. So let's look at a second method, which requires a deeper analysis of the slope of the tangent line. If we look at the slope before we reach our first point, we can see that the slope is negative, which is true until the slope is zero. We represent that on the graph of the derivative by showing that the graph exists below the x-axis until it touches the x-axis. Remember, below the x-axis is where negative y values live. So if our derivative is negative, it makes sense for it to exist below the x-axis. As we continue moving our tangent line along our curve, we see that our slope becomes positive, which we reflect on the graph of our derivative by drawing it above the x-axis, as this is where positive y values live. The slope is positive right up until the point where it becomes zero. For the next segment, the slope of the tangent line is negative, so we draw our derivative below the x-axis again until the point where the slope is zero. And for the last segment, we can see that the slope of the tangent line is positive indefinitely as this function continues off to infinity. Using this process, you should see that you get the same sketch as the first method. However, you get the satisfaction of knowing that you use calculus and the definition of the derivative. This process can be used to sketch the derivative of pretty much any function, as long as you understand what a derivative is and how to recognize whether the slope of a tangent line is positive, negative, or zero.